response is for none other than Terry Boers. That's got to feel good. It's going to feel good. good. I mean, it, it's good. been fun getting out and seeing all these people again because I think we saw them for a long time. <laughs> Too long. <laughs> Too long. <laughs> well, like, yeah, a few people have changed a little bit. But, yeah, I, I, it, it's, it's sort of like Old Home Week and Old Friday, Who Needs Two Tavern Tour, isn't it? <laughs> that's, what, that's what it is. But I'm, I'm grateful to them being so kind to me today. I appreciate that. And I appreciate them in general, as I've said before, and I wrote that without guys like these and women like there, there's no show, there's no Boris and Bernstein, nothing happens. So they're the ones, you know, they always say they're grateful to me. No, I'm grateful to you. It's the other way around. It's not hardly, because we have enough to, to do to the other today. Anyway, we, we, we didn't know what the hell we were doing for 17 years of nope. this. Now you got a genius of you. This guy here is something. Lawrence is great. And Layla is so sweet. So, I, I mean, you know, you got it made here, dude. So, so my favorite thing that's happened in the uh, three hours that we've been here is watching Terry and Layla talk. <laughs> and, I mean, I, I don't want to make too big of a deal out of it, but it, it, felt, it felt good. Like, just seeing the two of you interact because... You're the two people that have done the most with the least. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know already, don't you? <laughs> I was waiting for the reveal. We're just waiting to peel it back. And, and it's just beautiful because I say this about Terry all the time. That like when Terry would come into the hallways, everyone would light up. And seeing this place, when they saw that you were coming onto the stage, like light up is exactly how like all of us feel when he would walk down the hallways it didn't matter it didn't matter like what type of day you were having it didn't matter terry would come up and be like how are you what's going on he'd tell you a joke he'd crack a one-liner he'd call bernstein a penis something <laughs> well that was every day <laughs> that's, that's, that's true that's day ending and why <laughs> so so seeing seeing the people here in real time sports react the same way that score people react when we see terry boars is pretty bleeping awesome I appreciate that, Lawrence. Thank you. I, it, it's um, been a while since we've had a chance to talk, so yes. uh, a few things have changed. So <laughs> much better looking than I am anyway, so you've done <laughs> way better than, <laughs> than I ever did. Well, I was thinking this, too, that here we are 30 years removed from the start of the station when you weren't even sure you wanted to do this. No. You like being a writer. You didn't know about the whole sports radio thing. It's not going to work. Well, just wait. Just wait for that first Nielsen ratings book to come out, and then the score will be on the map. That very first ratings book that was going to validate everything. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. And I was, th this, was, this was a story that was told to me. I was not part of the station, and I'm glad I wasn't because I probably would have jumped off a cliff. Well, you know, you would have had a little help. I would have been right behind you because I think that's a safer place to be. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, we, um, you know, when you start something that it seemed like such a good idea that I can't miss, but I admit to being a coward. I, I completely admit to doing that. I mean, I, I had nothing um, left to prove writing right. that I didn't think anyway. Maybe so many people still would look at me and say, you had a lot to prove, ass face. And I said, well, maybe I did. It's very possible. But I, I really didn't have anything to prove. And I, I wasn't sure that I could do a radio show for four hours a day. I, I really didn't know what that would go like. I mean, doing all the radio I did in the sports report, that's a, that's a couple hours mm -hmm. with three guys. You know, so how many words you get in with Ben Bentley and Bill Jowes, good luck. So, <laughs> I, I mean, um, to me, it, it was a, a, an opportunity, a great opportunity, but it wasn't something I'd always thought I wanted to do. Right. I, I, didn't, I didn't start writing and doing newspapers because, oh, man, someday I can be on the radio. That's not why I did it. Not why I did it. But today is great. It, it is terrific to see everybody. And I, I'm glad they want to see me because I think a lot of people probably don't. So, <laughs> well, a lot of the people who don't are dead. So you got that going for you. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, and these two are remaining silent. Lawrence, one of my favorite people. And I, I, I saw the big story today about you two. Holy God. Oh, my goodness, that's great. Yeah, there's a story in the Tribune about yep. this show. And mm -hmm. luckily, like it, I think it does a really good job of talking about all three parts of the show, Dan, Layla, and myself. Yep. And 
It's great, but look, look, I, you know how I feel about you. Like, anytime that you're on the score airwaves, I kind of just want to shut up and listen um, <laughs> because of what you guys did. And, and I've, I've told each of you this individually, but I'll just say, like, as a show, like, the Boers and Bernstein show was instrumental to my career because both of you in your own way, Dan in a, in a surprisingly very lovely letter and Terry with just being like, do what you do, told me like the Bears reports were mine and I could do whatever I wanted. And Terry once said, he doesn't even remember this, but Terry once said to me, you're up there, we're not. We don't know what's going on, we're idiots. So just help us and tell us what the stories of the day are. And having that level of freedom, that, that gave me an audience because the five o'clock bears hit, two words, was important because I knew that I could come on and just set up a story, play a piece of sound, and let you guys react to the foolishness that Lovey Smith was talking about that particular day. So it meant a lot to me. So that's why I'm, I'm like falling back and like Layla and I are both kind of like, the champ is here, so we don't really need to be doing anything. Yeah, that's what, that's that's what we true. said when you walked up. I, I don't, I don't, I'm not the champion of anything, but I mean, I, I know good when I see it, and I do it right away with you. It took me all of about 10 seconds. I wish it was easy that I would have you with a horse. <laughs> 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 that's not quite that easy. Man, I love that horse. For about two minutes from now, you'll hate him. But you, I knew it right away. <laughs> two minutes I mean, after you bet on it, it's going to be glue. We, yeah, yeah. We, we can tell. And I saw Matt, Matt, Nicole, I, I hadn't seen Matt for a long time. And I, I, I think that one of the important parts of our show was the fact that he hated you. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> no, you're not lying. No, that, 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 that was an important dynamic. I, I think that was one of the best things about our show, that we were honest about everything. You know, some people hide that. Say, oh, don't, you don't have to come forward and just say you hate him, do you? Well, yeah, he would. And did, and here he is. <laughs> All right. Well, let's let's get the, let's get it straight. I didn't I didn't hate Dan. No, I just didn't like Dan. <laughs> okay. So no, it's really interesting. So, in, like throughout my time after now leaving the score, it's been five years, which is insane. Um, it, the question went from, "Is Mike North really like that?" <laughs> to, yeah. "Is Dan Bernstein really a blinkity blank?" That's mm -hmm. that's what the questions became. So uh, let's let's set the. I, I love Dan. I, I love Dan dearly. I always will love Dan. But I also, I also didn't like Dan at the same time. <laughs> especially on the air. Oh, especially on the air. So <laughs> what, what people might have thought was a bit or part of what the show, it was, it was, no. it was genuine. Well, look, that's the thread that ties everything together. Yeah. That, that is, for, for people who don't understand the secret sauce, mm -hmm. the magic of this station, and that has been exactly what you're saying, is that none of us are good enough actors are smart enough to pull off role playing, to pull off long form acting. And for better or for worse, through over, over years, over 30 years now, through various spats and various combinations and incarnations and God knows even the stuff out of our control, what's been happening with Chicago's teams, the fact that it's been real and the fact that however many corporations have owned us now through Diamond and Infinity and CBS and Westinghouse and the other CBS and Entercom, which is now <laughs> Odyssey, that the fact that Ron Gleason and Jeff Schwartz and Drew Hayes and, and Mitch Rosen now for so long have kept that fire of, of reality, of, of everything, of just be, you be yourself. I don't want to Matt Nagy here, but of it being, being real. And it could be uncomfortable sometimes. Yeah. No, it was. But, and but, it, but it, that, that's, that's why we're here. And that, that's the connection that we all feel right and now. And it's funny because, you know, we talk about it as the score family. We'll say score family, score family. But that's, it's legit what it is. And people have different definitions of what family is. And people can create different images of what a family is based on their own experiences. But this really is a family where I, I there's legit, I, I wanted to punch you. <laughs> But it was like we were we were like we were we were like siblings. I mean, we were we were close enough in age where we were siblings. We we would have been in high school together, I think. How old are you? Fifty three. Yeah. So I'm I'm forty nine. We would have been in high school together, and we like we so we're like siblings. Oh, you're almost fifty. <laughs> Tremendous amount of respect for you. I know, dude. It's crazy, right? Um, 
but there's uh, there's always been respect for you. But I I didn't always like you. But this but, but, but the thing is, though, but the like, fact that can, this guy that this guy would just sit back. Oh no, because he knew. I mean, he was smart. He knew, and and people. We well, had a it. house full of boys and, too, and people liked it though. That was the whole thing. He was like the father figure of the show, and the oldest and the youngest were going at each other, and he, he and he let loved it go, it. and we would fight, and people loved it, and, and you know, listening loved it. Oh yeah, I love how you give it to Bernstein. You can tell Bernstein, yeah, but it was real. <laughs> but we would scream at each other. I, well. I would scream at you. Yeah, Dan usually doesn't. He yeah, doesn't he really scream. He's, he didn't scream. It, it's, a, it's something very positive you can say about Dan. He takes it. Oh, no. He, t- he took it really well because he knew he's, a, he's, an, he's an a-hole. <laughs> <laughs> so he would take it. Send his and, wallet. But like, we would, I would scream at him and fight, and we'd yell. And then uh, 10 seconds later, we're in the hallway in a commercial break. Being like, oh, my God, that was awesome. Like, hey, you, know, you want something to drink? Or you need, are you hungry? you want anything? Yeah, it's like, it was fun. <laughs> yeah. But it, it, wasn't, it wasn't something that lingered or became detrimental to the show or our relationship. We had, I mean, we had some of the, the best times. My favorite times of radio were on the road with you off the air. I mean, just some of the times we had going out and hanging out as friends. So, yeah. But, but traveling I, through an airport with Terry was Oh, always... it's the most amazing thing. Well, no, you. No. You, he, the... <laughs> We'd get off an airplane, and this guy, he, like, he'd pack in a jewel bag to carry on. <laughs> he'd have his clothes like, in a jewel bag and put it in the overhead compartment. <laughs> And we'd get to the airport, and Terry and I would have to go like to baggage claim to get our bags because we're adults and we bring things. And Dan's like already out the like he's out the the, the airport door. Yeah, but Terry would be like, "Oh, okay, but yeah, bye, bye Dan." Like, Terry was bringing a like this giant red hard sided suitcase for like a two day trip. Remember the best was we st- we had to stop at a Walmart so he he could get his Metamucil. And he, he got, like, it was like the five-gallon drum of Metamucil. The, the industrial size yeah, Metamucil. Walked, it's like, like, there's a handle on it. We're like, how many times are you going to poop today? Like, what's, what's going on? Like, this, this only lasts me two days, buddy. I don't know. <laughs> I can't deny it, but I, I know that's true. So uh, when, when, you, when you knew that this, you were going to be here, you're going to be healthy enough to be here, and I know you had this circled on the calendar to, to be a, a, a target destination for you. What what does it what does it mean to actually be here? Well, it, it, it um, validates that this station that I knew was going to succeed. I, I, I felt it, but I just was f- afraid of it, and I wasn't sure I was going to be good at it. But in terms of um, how did I think it was going to do? I, I don't know how it could miss in Chicago. You know, in the back of my head, it kept saying that, but in the front of my head, it kept saying, "Yeah, but don't quit. Don't quit the Sun Times just yet. Let let this thing play out." And see how you do in the first five months, and then we got the book, and it was oh jeez, <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> oh what happened here? And we were so bad, Maddie. It, it was was it like before. a zero? Oh, it it was close to that. Yeah, pretty close to that. <laughs> we, you know, I'm thinking, wait a minute, where are all these people who love sports? Do they hate us already? I mean, because the early part of this station was north. I mean, really, in, in fairness to, to anybody at the station, it, w- it was him. And because he's the one yep. who drew all the attention. He's the one that told off George McCaskey. Oh, my God, one of the great interviews of all time. Mike McCaskey. Just killed him. Mike McCaskey, yeah. And he just killed him. I mean, I never heard anybody do that because that, that guy talked in circles and like a lot of them <laughs> do. He didn't know. He, but, but North leveled them in an interview. And I mean, it brought attention to the station. And... I, I think that once people got used to the fact of what the, what the shows were like and that they liked people or not, I was trying to make up my mind that I, that I thought, okay, I know we failed for now, but I still can't believe in Chicago we're going to fail. I don't believe that because then it's on me. Then I'm going, well, wait, what are, what are you doing? What are, you, are you doing something wrong? I mean, because you knew the North and Jigs were solid. They were solid in the mornings. And then we take over, and all of a sudden, everybody went out on vacation. We, we were just, <laughs> I was talking to myself. Might have been in a closet. Oh, yeah, it wasn't a closet. Um, and, and nobody was paying attention well, to anything we did. It is, as much as Mike North deserves that kind of credit, so does Ditka. Oh, absolutely. As much as, as, much as we yeah. lampooned him and made fun of him, and you're talking about somebody who doesn't care. You're talking about somebody who just takes it and doesn't care. But the, the outsized role that he played as both a part of the station and a, a foil for so much of, of what we did. You were talking about the, the larger the life presence, that, that helped. That did. And it was a great hire by them, the idea that Mike did the show, even though we didn't speak, 
and hadn't spoken in years. I mean, the birth of who you crap in. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like having Terry, like his voice be on the, the open for who you crap in. Yeah. He's iconic. Well, yeah, the Mike Ditka show, also known as the show where you drink wine. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. Oh, my God. I mean, he'd be stumbling the walls by the time we were almost over here. Well, see, Terry, that's what, what's amazing about you. And I know, like, at yeah, North and the credit for birthing the station and creating what it was with his really exaggerated personality and his, and his sports takes. Yeah, Mike deserves all the credit and, and all the love for it. But, Terry, you, you developed as the heart and the backbone of the station, period. And there, there's no question of, about that. And it, it speaks to your lack of ego. And I think for yourself personally, this insecurity you've always had, like, am I good enough to do this? And you still felt that in 2017. I did. After starting in 1992. I was did. I still Was I good enough to deserve this recognition? And the fact that you, you never had an ego about it is what made you the most special person the shows the station's ever had. What got lucky with you two idiots is that <laughs> you never had an ego either, which was, which was really spectacular because this, this, this industry is, is full of massive egos. And the fact that both of you came together, two extremely different people, to put together a show from 1999 to 2017, which was the best radio show, and I don't care what genre it is, that this radio will ever have. Just don't replay any of those early ones or we're oh, all... Oh, God. But it doesn't yeah, matter. But, see, but, but the thing is, oh, you guys allowed... And it's like, it's like a good business owner. You allow the people you hire to do their jobs. You guys allowed people to do their jobs. You didn't dictate what music was played. You didn't dictate what sound there was. You didn't dictate who talked. It was... No. I, I remember my first day as EP. It was like, hey, there's a microphone in front of you for a reason. Use it when you want. Yell at him. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yell at, yell at Dan. And that's just, that really basically what it became. Did, but both of you guys, with your lack of ego, is really what made the show so special. I remember at your retirement party that we had in the performance space. January 5th, you said, 2017. You said something to the effect of the best part of not doing this anymore was not having to watch Bears games. <laughs> still feel that ha, has it, ha, Still, to this day, like, you never, do you ever feel compelled? It's 11.55 a.m. on a Sunday. You're like, maybe we got to see what this Matt Eberflus and Justin Fields have in store for us. Nothing? I, I do watch once in a while. Okay, I, I, all right, I do I, it. I, I, I mean, I certainly watch a Broncos game, and I hate Denver. So, I mean, it, it, it doesn't, um, that was the toughest part, was to sit down for that Sunday and watch that Bears game. <laughs> <laughs> said, oh my God! Because I mean, that's what people reacted to. Yeah, the, 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 the baseball, yeah. the hockey. We, we had three champions while we were together. Uh, three Hawk championships. All that, and all the drunken people that day that I was on the train with. They're all sleeping, and I couldn't get out. I couldn't. I couldn't get off the train because they were all sleeping in the aisle, drunk. So I, I mean, I, I I thought, well, but even that doesn't compare to the Bears. Not even a start oh, yeah. to what the Bears are. Terry, was there a point when you felt when you felt the station had turned the corner? Like you go from those early days of the old ratings diaries and looking and feeling like no one's listening. What was the point where you felt like, okay, we've got an audience and there those people are actually out there? Um, probably not till the two thousands. After after 9-11, I, I, I think after that, when I realized that I went home that morning and I got such a reaction to that, which I didn't expect from people I knew and calling and doing all this other stuff. I said, really? You wanted to know what I thought about what was happening? And I went home that day. The only day I didn't do my job. And I got such a reaction to that. I thought, this can't possibly be. We're not, a, we're not bringing you news. We're not bringing you news of the towers collapsing. But we were that day. And I thought, this many people care about this and care about this show? Maybe I should start to care about this show more <laughs> and, and look at it. Maybe I should start nah. to think about this a little bit and say, you know, I mean, this is really special. This is really something that I didn't expect. It was, it was a reaction. Are you okay? You okay? You, you okay? You okay? Uh, what, what happened? Where were you? And I'm and thinking, I did this for almost 10 years by that point, and nobody cared where I was. I didn't think. <laughs> I thought they were not there. It just didn't matter. But it, 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 that told me something, that somehow at a time when we were all saddened and shocked and everything else by it, there were enough people who cared about a sports station 
to wonder if I was okay. It's, it's, where, it's where they came to, to, to feel like things could be okay. But I think they did. And then, then it was the, the guy singing, the guy right? Singing, that you're a grand that old flag. Right? Yeah. That, brought, that brought comedy back. It, yeah, it, it brought the show back from what we were doing to... That was the first yeah. thing we made fun of. Yes. <laughs> so, so, Layla, yes. a guy called in to, to the Boris and Bernstein show, and we had been somber, like, as a station a for, yes. for, for a whole for, week. For, for, Easily, a, right. a, for yeah. a week of what, what's going on in the world and uh, what, what do we do and just being there for people. And then he, then he started singing a grand old flag. Just started singing. Like, he, he didn't asked. He asked. He said, guys, and he was, he, he was choked up, and he said, I just, I just feel compelled to call, and I just, I want to sing You're a Grand Old Flag. And he sang it at the top <laughs> of his lungs, <laughs> and I'll be damned if I, that, that was it. Oh, that, that was that, it, that, yeah. that, that, I, so, I just started laughing. So Dan and Terry kind of gave all of us permission to start laughing again because they had had enough, yeah. you know, and, and started cracking up on the air as this guy's singing. Now, that guy's still <laughs> listening today. Please call in because we'd love to hear you sing. <laughs> yeah, I, I take one today. Absolutely. It. What was, uh, for both of you guys, so 1992, 1995, uh, favorite memory that comes to your brains, whether it was oh, during this show or just your time in general with the score? Favorite? I, I'll say this, and I've been thinking about it a lot since the, the industry has changed and, and the world has changed so much. The Who Needs Two Tavern Tour. And I know that I could be peevish and annoying in some of those times arriving and having to get get all my stuff (laughs) together. But but thinking back on what that meant for as combative a show as we were and how how the rough ride that we always gave callers and contributors to be wherever we were and from Sherville, Indiana to Kenosha. Sometimes needing security. Oh, yeah. I mean, they'd have actionable (laughs) threats and all that stuff. And and that day in Ottawa where they shut the, they they let the kids out of school because we (laughs) were there. They didn't, like, seriously, they closed schools early. And The, the, the Evergreen Park. The one we did, where everyone just brought us food yes. from everywhere and yes. wine. Yes, that was at, at the Kenwood Liquors, yeah. right? Oh, yeah, Kenwood Liquors, that's right. But, but little things like that, they, they, in totality, each Friday was, okay, it was a Friday, and we'd be out, and, you know, it just meant Dad was out, he'd be home late. But after a decade of that, every single Friday, where no radio show had ever been out in the people, among the people, some sparsely attended and some intensely attended. But I thought what that did and what that meant, for Bud Light to have been committed to that and work that Jeff Fritz did oh, yeah. in our sales department. Hundreds and hundreds the, of shows. Yeah, the, the, the boots oh on the groundwork. The, the, what, what, <laughs> and the engineers, the poor engineers that had to come out and, 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 and do sometimes in terrible weather and outside and under tents and everything it did every single Friday. Every one. Yeah. In a different place with different people and sometimes the same people. And then there were the women in Kankakee who left in the moment the show started. There's this little, this little <laughs> table, and everyone, blue-haired old ladies, and we walk into this place, and Terry goes, oh, this isn't going to be good. And then because and then he couldn't help himself in the very first segment of the show, and there's these, these, these ladies right out of Mayberry, RFD, who are sitting over there, and, and, and Terry says something like, well, you can just kiss my ass and don't spare the crack. And... and, 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 and and they all, and the ladies just say, well, check, please. <laughs> <laughs> and immediately left. So for you, it was the, the Who Needs Who I, I Tavern just, I just think what, in, what in, in that, total. in total, yeah. what that was is really important. What about you, Terry? Uh, the same thing. I, I mean, I think that, that getting out like we did, as much as you hated a Friday drive to someplace an hour and a half to two hours away from where I was, was, was uh, daunting. I mean, we were everywhere from the hell to, I mean, everywhere. And I felt like that connection was so special with those with those guys, and they got to know him a little bit, besides the penis one. Yeah. You know, they, they got to know that that really he's not that bad. He's okay. It's not, he's not dangerous. Speaking of dangerous, here's another guy dangerous right here. Um, but I, I, I think that taught me so much, and it it, um, it also gave me a chance to see that people cared so deeply about this show. They were talking to me about the callers. Have you ever met that guy? And I said, no, right, I don't know. He said, well, you, you certainly gave him a rough ride, and I love it. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was sort of a, a, a dual thing. First of all, it, it was good to hear somebody didn't mind yelling at the stupid. I, I think that's a very necessary thing even today. 
still necessary. And second of all, that you, you put faces to names. Yep. You, you see people and you go, ah, oh, ah, ah, you're here. How did you get here? You were, you, were, you were a two hour drive away the last time we were out. So I think that connection helped. I, I think it helped the show. I think it helped him. And it, it, um, it made it so we were available. We're not hiding from you. You know, when we say what we're doing and being mean to people and yelling at callers and all the other stuff, that again, if you're going to be a dummy, you're going to get it. It was okay. Yeah. We, it, was, it, was, it was an approval. And I, I loved when we did the, uh, the Who You Crap in Live. I thought that was just that was oh, really special because yeah, it brought out the who's who of B&B callers and score listeners. It was just really fun. It was a great connection to it. Um, w- one thing I'll, I'll always say about, about this show that I, I think I'm most proud of in our time together was when there was breaking news. Because there was, you guys, there was no one better than advancing a story, um, furthering what was happening when there was breaking news. It was, o- it was always great to see you guys get into, like, real journalistic radio type mode and not just be the clowns that <laughs> was like, hey, it was just the, the you know, the, like the dumb... I had the, the face paint with Yeah, it. like the dumb <laughs> trains coming through town and you guys rode that well. But when, it's, when, when time got serious and needed to be serious, you guys were, were the best at it. I see Chris Tannehill with a headset on. Hello there. Hello there. <laughs> I, I mean, we're, we we're talking about the Boers and Bernstein show, and Jason was already it's on. Boers and Bernstein, they're here. Yeah, they're here. <laughs> they're here. We just but get to listen. Yeah. We have Maddie here, and, like, the four of you put together a dynamic show. And he's another one that doesn't like to hear how good he is at doing his job. Oh, he's, he's the best. You the me? best. The absolute best. Oh, my God. Maddie, too. Yeah. Maddie. I, I mean, that's why I wanted all four of you here. I wanted all four of you here to talk about your show because of how much that show means to people and to listeners. And that, you know, where you have the organization skills of Maddie and Maddie kind of keeping everybody honest. And then you have the production skills of a Chris Tannehill that is the Amazing. soundtrack of the show. Well, it's... It's not often. I, I grew up with the station. I grew up listening every day. I grew up listening to, to Dan and Terry. So it's not often you get to have someone who grew up a listener all of a sudden become part of that show. It doesn't happen in the radio that way. I was pretty lucky in that regard. So, and then, for, for Jason, too. Right, exactly. Like, and to fill in for Jason after, after he moved on to Atlanta, like, you know, I was just trying to, to keep up, you know, because I, I learned so much from all you guys, from Maddie and from Jason and Rock and Zawaski, But, like, just trying to keep up early on, and then. But the more as, as time goes on, the more I appreciate our time together because it was like that's actually not how you're supposed to do radio. <laughs> <laughs> so well, that was wow. that was my first full time gig, and I was so happy to to get it. But like as the years go on, like oh yeah, we really did things quite differently. Quite differently. Than so they should have been done. Was, but what was great about it was like Scott Sher, his voice was sound, yeah. and he Scott never spoke. He was sound. And then Jason, Jason comes in, and it was basically a four-man show with, with Jason and me and, and you guys. And then Chris comes in, and he's a, a great combination of the, the best production possible, but also a voice. And the problem was a majority of it was off-air and generally going back into segment. He would drop things I was trying all to, the time. I was trying to feed you some stuff. I do it to Shane now. I'll, I'll feed Shane my best line so he can take the bullets for it. <laughs> But it was great. And again, it, it just goes back to you guys and just not having egos and allowing everyone to contribute everything they could to the show to make it as great as it was. Well, you know, I, I don't know much, and I, and I maintain that to this day. <laughs> Full stop. But I know good. I know good when I see it. And I know a producer, and I know a sound guy. Those are the best. I mean, that, that's a simple fact. It's not, it's not made up. It's, it may not be in a history book. It's in my mind, though. I know how good he is. I know how good you were. And I, and I also felt like you're sort of a buffer between Dan and I because you could go ahead and talk to him any way you wanted to. And it kept him calm. <laughs> Somehow it kept him... I feel the same way, Terry. You were the buffer between these two guys. Like, Maddie would get in there and start banging that phone yeah. against, the, against the table there. Yes, he or did. yelling at Dan, like, okay, what did I get myself into here? But, yeah, that's, that's always great to... Great Somehow it all worked. And, 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 look, it isn't a two-man operation. It's a three-man operation. It's a, a four-plus operation. And, and that's where the show was the best, the stuff you guys did. What we did was, you know, I mean, some days was okay, some days was... But, but if you get people who, for whatever reason, want to know what we think, you're going to find out what we think. 
Nobody, neither one of us pulled any punches. I, I mean, we, nobody, nobody's saying, oh, my God, what are they, who, who are they on now? Well, we were on the ones who deserved to be on. We're going to take a quick timeout. We will come back with Terry Bores and, and maybe Maddie and Chris. and we'll Fill out a slip of paper that just says, write down your favorite score memory from the past 30 years below. And this one that was handed to me says, any who you crapping. <laughs> Which we, I, di I disagree. I, <laughs> yeah, it can't be any because sometimes all the people didn't get the bit. It was, no. it was so <laughs> rarely good. That's the, the, the truth. It was good when we did it for that for the entire champion of, of Who oh, You Crap, but that at, was great. At, at McNally's. Yeah. That, that was one of the all-time yeah. best shows. That, that was one of the all-time greatest shows, and that just hit everything. Everything was right. But for the most part, most Thursdays, it was, a, it was a slog, <laughs> and everyone loves the idea of it, but we would look and be like, oh, that guy again. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, here we yeah. go. We, yeah. This is you. Uh, <laughs> looking for the be big finish. Actually, like, oh, good if luck. you could get worse the next week than you were the week <laughs> yes, before, always. they called. Yes. The the, here he is again with yeah. another one. I don't know what the hell he's talking about. <laughs> yeah. The entire right. thing was tease, open, call. That's not the bit. <laughs> <laughs> Like okay, it must be Thursday, right? I, I, but but the one the one day that made it all worthwhile was that it was the championship day now. That made it all worthwhile. When Gary from Evanston, Gary Gerstein, the late Gary Gerstein, put on an absolute bravo performance that was for the ages, oh, for the ages. the ages. Yeah, he was absolutely terrific. I had a question before a guy asked me. Um, when did you first meet Bernstein? I said, well, uh, I, you know, he was actually on our airways before we ever met, that I recall. That's right. Uh, I, I couldn't remember. I asked him, what was he doing? Was he doing a Bears report? Was he doing a Cubs report? What was he doing? He said, I don't know. And I, and I remember getting off the phone, and I looked at Dan McNeil, that <laughs> and I said, there's a guy who thinks he's the smartest guy in the room. And Good scouting report. And he said, yeah, and I said... Yeah, he does. And you know what? I was right. He is the smartest guy in the room. I mean, that, that's just a fact. And I learned to live with that. I, I, I learned to take that. I learned to stomach that. But that's absolutely true. I mean, my first, that was my first impression. Because we'd never met. I, I, all of a sudden, this voice on is Dan Bernstein. I said, a what? A who? What's he got? What's he doing? <laughs> Dan, I, I know that your default is that it'll work. But did you think it, it was going to work? Yeah. Why? It, because I, I started listening to the station in large part because of Terry, and I started forging a connection, like, oh, this is legitimately funny. And it was fun, and you'd hear radio bits and goofy radio stuff, and, you'd, and, I, and I found the, the Monsters of the Midday entertaining in what they did, but I always thought it was, it was aimed a little, a little low to middle brow. And then Terry would get on, and it was legitimately funny. And half the jokes McNeil didn't even get. <laughs> <laughs> and, there's, and there were just some references in there that are like, oh, he missed that one. It's like it, it, he dropped something in there, and there was just there was a rhythm and a timing to it that really grabbed me as a listener in Rockford on, on 820. And I, I couldn't wait. I would drive around doing sales calls, selling group tickets for Rockford Lightning games. And... <laughs> I was like, this guy's your door. I'm going, I'm going to, I'm, seriously, no, I'm knocking on the door of a tool and die shop in Rockford asking for a guy. Yeah, no, I'm not paying five bucks for no tickets to watch a bunch of black guys bounce a ball. I'm like, okay, all Good right. Good thing it wasn't down at Beecher yeah. Tool and Die. I'm, I'm uh, that's where we all used to go. <laughs> I, I thought it was Beecher and Meat. That's where we used to hang out. Yeah. Well, the, the meats were the high school mascot. Yeah, but, <laughs> but, but, yeah, so... <laughs> and, 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 and that's why I, I just, I, I, I knew, and it's, it's funny because it, I find it recapitulated now in what we were reading today in the Tribune, the same idea of you can have the ball or you can play off the ball, and it didn't matter. There, there weren't always defined roles. <laughs> Matt, Matt Cole's been shaking his head the entire time you've been speaking. Yes, Things never change. <laughs> recapitulated. Sorry, i got to get my dictionary out. I apologize. <laughs> Duke. He's the most or relatable Drake, man on radio. Yeah. Damn birds. <laughs> hey, so I, I, let, me, let me ask you guys a question here real quick. So my, my nine-year-old, we, we won our division for 9U Travel Baseball. Hank, yeah. Dick. So uh, the Lakeshore Feeder League, number one seed. We have our first playoff game tonight. I'm one of the coaches. Barry, uh, Barry Rosner gave me some advice. He said, when, when you guys take the mound tonight, 
have your pitcher hit the first kid in the head <laughs> with the first pitch. <laughs> he then says, if that doesn't gain traction, <laughs> have your pitcher hit the second kid in his cup. Okay. To keep the kids intimidated to not want to stay in the box. Oh. Good advice or bad advice? It could be a new segment for the show. <laughs> I, I feel like it would be hilariously funny, but it's terrible advice. Yeah, okay. That's really bad advice. It's bad advice. Yeah, it's that's bad yeah, advice. Yeah, They're okay. kids, yeah. So we shouldn't take that. If, if I've learned anything from Dan Bernstein over the years, it's like injuries to a child's head and brain, <laughs> it, it doesn't really do anything that young. Like, you're okay. You can't do anything negative. <laughs> remember the, that remember young. the years yeah. of his, his CTE campaign? <laughs> yeah, but what I remember about that most of all was that you can like hit a child on the head as many times as you want. And they'll be fine. <laughs> They're resilient. <laughs> yeah, exactly. they adapt. Yeah, and he always had to say he always had to say it too. He could never say CTE. He had to always be the doctor guy. <laughs> Whatever. I, don't know. I still what can't is say it now? It. Chronic traumatic encephalopathy. Exactly. Wow, folks. <laughs> Wasn't that a commercial we had? <laughs> <laughs> no, that was ankylosing spondylitis. <laughs> ankylosing spondylitis. <laughs> which, <laughs> which, and then Terry contracted. Do you remember? <laughs> what after did that? What did you contract after after having ankylosing spondylitis? <laughs> God. <laughs> I've had so many. I, I was remember. Was it a rectum it, disease? No, it was oh. an ankylosing spongy penis. <laughs> the spongy penis, yeah. I had the spongy penis, and yeah. The, best, the <laughs> best part was when the salesperson, the, 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 the ad Was it John Handcrusher? No, it wasn't oh. John Handcrusher. <laughs> Too drunk. That came running down the hall. I was like, hey, I really need to talk to the show. It's like, stop making fun of ankylosing spondylitis. And Terry's like, yeah, sure. We'll just, we'll just stop making fun of it. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, they spend a lot of money, and it's, it's a very serious condition. It's like, oh, get out of here with that. It's not, a, not as serious as my ankylosing spongy penis. <laughs> and Radio 101, you want someone to stop doing a thing? Tell them, hey, stop doing that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah uh, they I definitely eat, didn't uh, do see, it over and over again after see that. See George, see Schuster. <laughs> right, exactly. Can you tell them, kiddo, to stop making fun of me? Sure, we'll make it stop right now. <laughs> <laughs> Stop saying dumb fun I stuff. I was just thinking about it. The other day, too, for ankles and spongy penis. I was just thinking about the other day for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe it's because I knew I was coming here. But I was thinking about it, and I, there was other things you I You were had thinking my, about ankylosing spongy yeah, penis? Yeah, just, just, uh, just saying it. He's, a, he's, a, he's you a know, I mean, I, Some things you miss saying. You, you want to say it as much as you possibly well, can. That was like, remember when, when they got mad at Terry for making fun of Ed Curran? When uh, Ed Curran of Channel 2, and there's the horrible oh, the storm and the tornadoes. <laughs> and he said, Another, make sure that you're away from windows and make sure that you're in an in a, a, a area where the walls are sturdy. Protect yourself maybe by, by putting a heavy book on your head. head. <laughs> Cover your head, even using a book. Oh, 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 that shouldn't be in there. Wow. Oh, that's amazing. And, 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 so, of course, that, that became a thing. Like, I, was, I was so scared I put a book on my head. And they told us to stop, remember, because they were so sensitive about it. Yeah, I know. I know. I got told a lot to stop. Well, it's, you know, I'm glad to see that things never change. Right. Uh, first, and by the, the way, the first question do was... Do you know Mike North? Yeah. No, 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 no. The first question was... Are you on the air? <laughs> yes. <laughs> the headset might have given it away. The second question was <laughs> for you guys. Lights. This is for you guys. I think he drove here to ask this question. Yes. Why have the Cubs never retired Kenny Hubbs number? Kenny, Kenny Hubbs. Hubbs. Kenny Hubbs. I've never heard of Kenny Hubbs. I've never. I haven't. Second what, baseman. What, it was eight, what he year? Does did he, like, eight, was for 18, us. 18. Wait, what, what year did he play? Not 18, Hub. 18. Oh, it's not. Oh, my bad. Where yeah. did he play his ball? <laughs> what year did he play? This is great. 40, yes. 40 years ago. Just That's not that long ago. You never heard of him? Yeah, I said he's well, was on. Yeah. Well, yeah. Station gave birth 30 years ago. Well, he, they didn't retire his number because he, he had a blistering OPS plus of 70. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. And this guy sucked was he, out loud. Was he a relative of yours? No. He was a cub. Yeah, no, we, no, we established that. A Did you know him cub. personally or no? You know, you leave oh. it to Matt, right, to find a friend. <laughs> He has that come hither. He has oh, that, oh, yeah, he, that come to me look. Yes, if I remembered Roberto Clemente. Yeah, yeah no, we know. Yeah, I, we all remember yeah, those yeah, plays. I, I one think of the we best remember, players yeah. ever. Yeah, Roberto Clemente. Yep. Wait a sec. This guy was rookie of the year in he was rookie of the year, Yeah, yeah he died in a plate crash. Yep. Did, was this a joke? Did they give it to the worst second baseman? Yeah. <laughs> what the hell? Well, in those days, How? those numbers, you know, they, they don't mean what they did. Now, the they did, part, but they didn't. Oh, is that they didn't pay as much attention. So, no, no, he's not stopping. So, if I had these numbers, I'd say, don't look at me. He was a pedestrian. Uh, Don't Kenny, submit your Kenny, scores. Is it Hub? H-U-B? Hubs. Hubs? Hubs. Right. He does yeah. bears. <laughs> he, the bear, 
Hello. He does the Bears. Oh, okay. PFW. Uh, apparently, Kenny Hubbs died either a couple days before Roberto Clemente or a couple days after. He died before he started playing. And I asked, I asked, I asked how he died. Tanny, any thoughts on how he died? No. No, you don't. You don't have nothing to share. Did sure? he also die? In a, did he also sure? die in a plane crash? No, he he doesn't know. And I said, well, how did he die? And he said, well, he he the Cubs didn't retire him, so maybe he died of a broken heart. No, nah. <laughs> it's probably like alcohol poisoning. In those, or those Cub teams, nobody had a broken heart. When so he was a good second guy. baseman then. No, no, he was terrible. No, it was awful. Well, this is what the, hey, this is what the score remotes do. They they bring men to other men. So thanks for coming, sir. Thank right. you. Appreciate if there are any other mad about a cola relatives, come on up and ask a question. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he's done. It's my younger brother. No, he's, he's not stopping. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, no he, 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 he remembers Kenny Hubbs. He remembers him being Kenny bad. He, co he covered Kenny Hubbs. He covered him. He was a reporter. Like a, a blanket. <laughs> <laughs> he covered him with a blanket once. Yeah. Yeah. But back then, the blankets all had smallpox on them. <laughs> <laughs> and scurvy. Yar. The security at these events really has become lax. tight? The one. Yeah. This is really tight security, we, really right? Tight we, we found yep. the loophole here. Yep, we should have just had. Well, remember the first question <laughs> was, like, it takes something pretty special to get through our security here. Right? <laughs> this is like Ocean's Eleven. <laughs> <laughs> if we, you know what? If we, if we put together five bucks each, maybe oh. we could get him a new shirt. <laughs> well, Mitch is lucky. He took it away. Oh. I, was, I was about so to put a headset right on here. <laughs> Two weeks from now, he's hosting overnight. I was about to put a headset on him. Dan. He already isn't. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, Dan, he was he was this close to getting a headset. Oh, really? I was gonna make him yeah. Oh yeah. Well who put the headset on Bob from Niles when we were in yeah. Brett Lyons probably, right? Oh yeah. Manslap? He drove him back to his yes. estate. We were at the Howard Street Inn. <laughs> and he was like trapped there for like four days too. Hello there. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> like we, we found Brett Lyons in a box. <laughs> Get in the box. <laughs> It puts the lotion on its skin. You don't skin tell you what I want to know, you get in the box. <laughs> or else it gets the hose again and stuff. And stuff, you know, and it's a horse. And they were chewing on some pizza. <laughs> now, if you just passed the Kenny Hubbs test, we're all uh, Oh, dude, you know, hey, toughen your nipples, didn't that, it? That goes back to, Dan, what you were saying about, about none of us, like, like, being able to act. And, like, people thought the people, the characters we brought on the show were, like, things that I developed and created. Which I never would have like, like you're Lorne Michaels. Like we right, we yeah. talked about it. I said if, if I could create the the uh, Rusty from Stickney, Mike from Milwaukee, I would have been like a writer for SNL. Yeah. Mike from Milwaukee, <laughs> Bob from Niles. Oh. I mean, he would call in with a, a code word. Remember his code word? I do. Uh, should I say it or no? Oh yeah, because I think it's done now. It was Scorpion King. Scorpion King. <laughs> yeah. He would. He created a, a, a code word with me. So he was like, "Hey, I know people out there are trying to impersonate me. So when I call in, I'm going to give you a code word so you know it's me." I said, great, what should it be? And he said, it'll be Scorpion King. That is. So when I call in, I'll <laughs> that say. That is outstanding. And, hey, Matt, it's Rusty from Stickney. And I'll say, what's the code word? And he'll go, Scorpion King. And I knew it was him. <laughs> yeah, you couldn't miss Rusty from Stickney for a no. second. You know what I actually, oh, I, I pulled out of storage. I have, I have old B&B show files. And I have all my old folders of all the uh, Tournament of Bad stuff, everything. I was going to bring it and give it to somebody who probably would have done some things to it <laughs> later tonight, but the I, forgot, I forgot bad. to bring him. Although, I did bring Spiegel's uh, marsh peg thing, the, the hockey goalie thing. That you he had it. I had it. Oh, yeah. They pegging out here. Remember how much he loved it and he was like, so streets. proud of it? And then he, he left it in the studio, <laughs> and I was hosting with you, I think, right after him that day, and he left it in the studio, so I took it home, and I've had it at home ever since that day. <laughs> and I, I brought it to him today. And should, he was looking for it literally for years. Years. Yeah, you, should, <laughs> you should also take some of the carts of Murphs that you destroyed on purpose. So, hey, is that out there? Yeah. You, you've oh, has that been out there? Said. Yeah, we've. Yeah, so before we had Audio Vault, we Where's know we Layla? had the, the, the 8-track right cassette there. things. Oh. And I used to... Terry, well, after, after Murph's show would end, I would, oh. I would, I would cut she's the carts. Out. She's engineering. So they, so the Layla's engineering the and show right now. He couldn't use now. <laughs> she's multitasking. Okay. She, she is multitasking. Yes, she is. Engineering the show. <laughs> <laughs> See? I think you offended her by something you said, Dan. Uh, probably. <laughs> yeah. She's on the, the ones. First time. I was going to say. Layla's on the ones and twos right now. I uh, probably would go to the Wisconsin Dells, because from what I understand, that's where I was uh, perceived from birth. <laughs> you see, like, you can't write that. <laughs> no, <laughs> impossible to write. The, uh, ask Rusty. I mean, like, you know, what's your, what's your, favorite, what's your favorite kind of cheese? Grilled. <laughs>
That would be grilled. So what, do you, what do you say about, about the it's Greeks? Good, good people, the Greeks. Good people. <laughs> Stay away from my... Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, talking it's, about people from 20 years ago. Oh, yeah, can't say that. Right. Can't say that. Can't can't say say that. that. Then he got mad at a guy and said he was going to punch him in the solar flex. Yep. That's right. <laughs> yep. Who was his buddy that he used to play football Boris. with? Boris. Boris, that's right. Long snapping together. Yeah, they would long snap. <laughs> and people thought I like made that up. Yep. Yeah. Thank Speaking God you did. All right. Speaking there were people who thought those people were made up. I had people all the time say, that Bob, my from Milwaukee is not real. I said, what do you think he is? A wind-up toy? What, what do you think he's calling? Who do you, who do you, Rusty? I mean, I, people say, they can't be real. I said, well, where do you live? What are you talking about? Go to a, go to a bar stool. You find a guy just like him. He what just walked in. About? In here. Right? I mean, seriously, you find What are you today? talking about? Yeah. He's, he's going to be the fourth member on your show on Wednesdays. All right, we need, we, Why not? We need to take a break. <laughs> Dan, Lords, Layla, and the weird, creepy guy at the bar. <laughs> We've got to take a break. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. You, ever, you, ever, you ever heard of Kenny Hubs? <laughs> Why is his number not retired? Are you, are are you on the air? Years. That's the first question. Are you on the air? <laughs> I don't know what's coming next, except for the fact that Joe Ostrowski is scheduled That's right. i got to get out of Joe's, Joe's then, in the house. You don't have to go anywhere. You own the place. I don't own anything. Yeah, you do. You now, Terry, now whatever you, do. you want As of to do. Right now, you own Real Time Sports, and you have uh, a, a voting share in EOC Audio. I've, I've, <laughs> I've just decided that that's the case. And Odyssey Corp. Right, but I gotta go. Love you guys. It was great seeing everybody. Maddie, a lot Maddie. of fun. We love you. Love you guys too. Love you, Maddie. Love you, Maddie. You know the best. And I, and I say that even though I love Mike Elzamoro, who's sitting right there. You see little Alec. He's whatever. The kitty's pal. The I man. Know. The man <laughs> who hired me. <laughs> he looks excited that's to be great. here. <laughs> That's who you're you can blame. To be here. Happy to be here. You can right. blame Mike Alzamora for hiring. We have to break. break. Dan's getting nervous. We must and break. Yeah, and Dan's, Dan's getting nervous. More fun. He's getting more gray coming your way <laughs> on the score. <laughs> Why didn't you come down? And me and Boris, you put our heads together, and maybe make a couple bucks off this thing. You're listening to the Score's 30th Anniversary Party live broadcast from Real Time Sports in El Grove Village. Hey.